Okay, I see Mastermind e publishing strategies. Great. Excellent. Great, great, great. So uh, let's get started. Let's dive right in. So, uh, hi, and I really hope everyone is having a really great day so far. Don't worry if you're not having a great day, it's about to get a whole lot better. So, let me say thanks for attending tonight's Mastermind webinar. We're going to be serving up some really great content that will actually help you to grow your publishing revenue exponentially starting right now and setting you up for success in 2014 and beyond. So get your pens, pencils, and notepads out ready to take notes so you don't miss anything. So first let me tell you a bit about me. My name is Colin Scott and I am the Business Development Officer over at Speedy Publishing LLC. And we're a hybrid publishing company that creates, acquires, and publishes content in the form of print, ebooks, audiobooks, enhanced ebooks, and mobile apps. So I was actually born in the sunny island of Jamaica, where I spent the majority of my adult life. I attended and graduated from the University of the West Indies and began working in the financial sector as a credit administrator. Very, very boring job. <laughs> And I did that all the way until 2006 when I started my first website, GetJamaica.com. And I did that with just about 20 bucks by buying the domain name on GoDaddy and setting up the hosting. And I wrote so much content for this website. And in 2011, someone made me an offer that I could not refuse. And I sold that website for 23,000 US dollars. And I built it all the way up from the ground with my own two hands, something that I'm very, very proud of. Now, between that time till now, I've done a whole lot of things. I've made money with AdSense. I've made money with affiliate marketing. I flipped a whole bunch of websites like GetJamaica.com. I've made money in Forex trading. I've made money on eBay. And I've made money with Kindle Publishing. And over that period of time, I've made just about a million dollars in terms of revenue online and it's been pretty pretty good over that particular time period. In fact, my first book was actually published all the way back in 2008 and the name of that book is Jamaican Cooking Made Easy and it still ranks in the top 10 for the search term Jamaican Cookbook on Amazon.com but that was all before I discovered self-publishing. And now in just 30 days, and in one of my CreateSpace accounts, I was able to amass royalties of over $4,300. And the reality here is between November 1, 2013 and December 1, 2013, just one of my CreateSpace accounts was able to bring in this amount of money basically on autopilot. I created my books, I published them, I use CreateSpace to sell primarily, of course, on Amazon, and this is the type of revenue that we're able to generate. So the reality here is this does not include all of the other platforms that I publish to, whether it's Kindle or Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, or any other physical or digital retailer out there. This is only CreateSpace. So pretty much apart from the obvious that you should not trust a skinny chef. Over the time period that I've been in publishing, I've learned a couple of fundamental lessons. The first one is of course proof of concept is critical. You need to see it working before you attempt doing it on your own. That is probably the most important lesson. Next, you want to make sure that you innovate and don't imitate you need to be original in the application of your strategies. That is a critical concept for you to know. You also need to do what works for you in your own way. And what do I mean by that? Do what fits your budget, what fits your time, and what fits your core competency, or pretty much what it is that you're really good at. Next, you have to know that if you write it, it doesn't mean that they'll read it. Most people think about, if you build it, they will come. That's not the same case in publishing. Like everything else on the planet, you need to market your book. Next, what's in a name or in a title? You need to make sure 
that your content has a relevant name and a relevant title. And more importantly, it's going to be a name or it has to be a name or a title that people want to hear or people want to see. Don't just publish your content to one retailer. It's a classic mistake that almost every self-publisher makes when they start out. You need to ensure that your content is available everywhere at any point in the day. And finally, you need to go to where readers go. You need to make sure that you're placing your content in front of the people that want your content, in front of the people that want to consume the type of the content, type of content that you are actually creating. And this is critical and you need to keep you know, stock of these particular lessons because this is the basis of self-publishing. So let's now look on what you're going to be learning today. So we're going to be covering three really great strategies that are going to help you to skyrocket your publishing revenue. The first one we're going to look on are enhanced ebooks or what I call EBs. And this is the next generation of self-publishing. We're also going to look on how fundamental it is to publish your books and make them available for libraries to purchase. And finally, the most powerful retail platform that has been right under your nose that is possibly going to start outselling the Kindle in a couple of months or even a couple of years. I would put this as probably being one of the most important things that you, you're going to want to definitely sit down and take note of. So let's dive right in. And we're going to look on strategy number one, which is EBs and enhanced books, or enhanced books, what I call EBs, and publishing ebooks for the future. So what exactly are enhanced books? These are downloadable books that have enhancements that come in the form of audio, video, or animations. Now I have a couple of examples that I've listed here. And the first one is, of course, an example of the book Moby Dick. And in this particular EPUB or ebook, I've actually added a clip from the movie Moby Dick with Gregory Peck. And I'm a big fan of Gregory Peck and, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird and stuff like that. I'm a really big fan of his. And I put that clip inside the book Moby Dick. And the next example, of course, is a book that's done by one of her students. And she has a really, really great book, Malicious History, and I want you to remember that, that title. And in this particular book, we've added a video, which is a typical trailer of the book, to that particular EPUB. And it was very, very simple and easy to do. So in reality, why should you even care about enhanced ebooks? Well, the 2013 US Consumer Report by Boker revealed that enhanced ebooks are the future of publishing. And in this chart, they showed that Kindle Fire downloads now exceed Nook downloads. So right here on this side, you're seeing the actual Kindle, which of course dwarfs everything else. But then here you have the Kindle Fire, which is rising very rapidly. In fact, it grew by about 40% on the year. And what exactly does that mean? It means that devices like this, where individuals can access and read enhanced ebooks are becoming more popular. Hence, more people will begin downloading books like that because they can read those books. And so with more devices that exist that can read ebooks and more retailers that are selling enhanced ebooks and more devices that are reading overall enhancements period, it's going to create a much better experience for that particular reader. And one thing that you want to definitely take note of is that ordinary PDFs and ordinary books will eventually become outdated. In the past, when individuals used to write on scrolls, and we're talking about way back in pre-BC times, an individual would scribble on a scroll, and he scribbled on a scroll and he had a billion scrolls. And then when someone invented the book, no more scrolls. So the individuals who had all their content in scrolls had to then try and transfer all that content into a book. And those were handwritten books. And then when the handwritten book went out with the print tray, then all those people who had their books, which were handwritten, those disappeared into oblivion. And now we have the changing of the guard into what are known as digital books. 
Now, we don't anticipate that physical books will ever go away, but we do think that you'll have more people taking advantage of getting the content here and now. So we know that ordinary ebooks will eventually become outdated, and that's something that you want to make sure that you're on the cusp of, making sure that you have your content prepared and ready to go into that particular era. And more importantly, you have the transition from your books into what are known as apps. And apps are quickly becoming the easy thing for people to get a hold of on their mobile devices. And when your book is an enhanced ebook, it can easily go into transition into an app. So let's quickly jump into how exactly you're going to actually create your enhanced ebook. So there are a couple of steps that you need to follow. The first step is that you need to ensure that your book is placed into an EPUB3 format. This is a, this is a format that your, that, that your mobile device, whether it's a tablet or a sing, single standalone e-reader, can read and access the content and the data. And it's pretty much just a zip file, which I'm going to show you right now, with web pages that are stored inside that particular zip file. So we're going to dissect an EPUB 3. Next, you're going to look on to, you know, you're going to find the source or source your existing video. And that's a very, very easy thing to do. Most people are typically unaware that you have, have things such as stock videos that you can utilize. Once you've got your stock videos, you want to convert that video into something known as an MV4 or what is known as an Apple TV file. And once you've done that, you now have your book ready to become an enhanced EPUB. Your next step is that you're going to create the code in order to add it to that particular book. You're going to edit your EPUB 3 to become a zip file, add the code to the pages, revert that zip file to an EPUB, and then you're going to test that particular EPUB. So if it's kind of confusing, let's dive right in to kind of see exactly how this is going to work. So first, I'm going to start off by heading over to Fiverr. So the key thing here is, is that in order to get your book into an EPUB 3 uh, format, you're going to have to find someone to do that. Now, this person here, if you're seeing the name, you can go ahead and scribble it down, is someone who we use all the time. Now, there are other contractors on Fiverr who can do this for you, but it's really just $5. And you can take your Microsoft Word document and hand it over to receive, and he'll go ahead and convert your book into an EPUB 3. And most importantly, you can see his response time is two hours. I've given him books or five or six books all at once, and within three or four hours, I've gotten them all back in a valid EPUB 3 format. So that's your first step. Now once you've gotten that, you want to go ahead and source your videos. And the place that we source our videos is a website known as Videoblocks. And what Videoblocks actually is, it's a repository for stock video. So let's assume in this particular instance, I'm creating a book that has to do with, say, the African Safari. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and type in African Safari. There we go. And I'm going to click this button here to look for video. Go ahead and search. And here we have a whole range of videos on the African Safari. So you've got these video clippings here these video clippings here. Here's one with some chickens. <laughs> Here's one with, uh, with just some people walking uh, in a market apparently. Okay, walking on the street. And then here you've got a really nice one with a rhinoceros. And then you have some animals at a water hole. So you've got some wildebeests and some antelopes and stuff like that. So the key here is, is that you've got a whole wealth of content, a whole got a lot of content that you can utilize. And if you think about it, when you watch something like National Geographic, it really is just a set of clippings that are pasted together. That's really what it is. So video goes from one clip to another clip to another clip. What this basically means is that if you're thinking the way you're supposed to be thinking, is that you can come here and you can actually craft an entire documentary or story by using clippings. Now the key thing is that with video blocks, you can download an unlimited number of these videos and you can create your own video and add your own voice to that video. And that means you can take probably a day and create the videos that you require because all of these downloads are unlimited. 
you can sign up for a one month period or sign up for a free seven day trial and download a thousand videos and then decide what exactly what you're going to do with them. So once you've done that, you've sourced your videos and you've put together the video that you want to add to your existing book or a new book, you're going to head to a website known as Zamzar. And I use Zamzar for the obvious reason, A, it's also free for videos that are below 100 megabytes. Now typically you don't want to add videos that are going to exceed 25 megabytes into your ebook. And the reason for that is an ebook is still a file that is downloaded by a tablet. So the larger the file, the longer it's going to take and it might end up you know, with a bad experience for that particular reader where they're sitting for hours depending on their connection waiting for the file to be downloaded. So you don't want that to happen because it might end up resulting in a refund at the end of the day because the file is just too large. So you want to keep it between you know, 20 to 25 megabytes. But then once you do that, you're going to come to Zamzar, you're going to select your file, and then you're going to convert your file into what is known as an M4V. And you can find that easily here, and it's absolutely free if you're going to do it. You find it for an M4V here and you convert your file. Or you can go to what is known as an Apple TV file, which is a video preset. Now either will work. So I've seen sometimes that depending on how your initial video file has been created, we have not been able to see the Apple TV appear but we still do have the MV4 and it's important for you to understand that either one will work, right? So once you've done that, you now have your EPUB3, you now have your video which, you, which you're ready to, to put into your book and so the process begins. So the first thing that you want to do is, is that you want to get your EPUB3 and in this particular example I'm using an EPUB which is this very same Moby Dick. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to rename this file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on F2 and then I'm going to name this EPUB into ZIP. And remember I said that an EPUB is really a zip file of uh, regular HTML files or pretty much like a, a website that has been just put together where each web page is actually a chapter in your book. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to extract it and it's very important, never ever extract it. Just double click on that file and you'll get inside that file and I'm going to go into what is known as the OPS section and this is the actual book. So each chapter here you can see represents a particular file. So I'm, I'm going to choose which chapter I want to place my video in. So in order to do that, I'm going to select this chapter here and I also need to get what is known as my manifest file. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for this file which is called the OPF file. I'm going to copy these two files and I'm going to come back out of the zip file and I'm going to place them out here. So once I've done that, now the process begins to add your existing code. So I'm going to head back over to the code that we use at Speedy Publishing, which we created that works extremely, extremely well. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to click on where it says steps to follow. And what you're seeing here is the actual code that you need to put into that file in order for it to work. So in this case, I'm going to assume that this Moby Dick video, which you're going to see basically in a second, is the actual M4V that I actually I actually converted. Now if you're converting an audio file, it's the very same thing. You want to convert it to what is known as an M4A file. So M4A is for audio and M4V is for video and both exist on Zamzar where you can convert your MP3 to an M4A and your MP4 into an M4V file. So you've got to get make sure you get those two files and I'm assuming Let's assume that these two files are the video files that you would have created. So once you've opened this up and you now have your code, you want to go back to the chapter where you are and you want to open this with what is known as an HTML editor or you can open it with a text file. Never ever open it with Microsoft Word or anything like that. Open it with an HTML editor or a regular notepad file, just an ordinary notepad file, not notepad++ or anything like that. So in this case, I'm going to open this up with Microsoft SharePoint Designer, which is the file that I like to use when I'm editing HTML files. So let's go ahead and pop that open. OK. 
Okay, okay. Go ahead. There you go. So now that we've opened that chapter, there's a simple thing that you want to go ahead and do. I'm going to open up this particular file here, which is my code, and I now know and have my code that I must add to this for my video. So all I've got to do is copy this here, and I can place this because this is below the chapter title, which is, of course, the H1, and I know it because it's my book. And I go ahead and place that link right there. And this is something that you want to make sure that you change because if your video is called your book, you want to make sure that you change this from video.mp4 to your book .m -m sorry, m4v to, to your book m4v. So you want to make sure that is the case. So you make sure you name your files correctly, right? And then you paste that in there. So I'm going to, I've put the video in and I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just close that file. Next, I want to go into what is called my OPF file. Now, in order to edit your OPF, you need to change it to a text file. So I'm going to F2, and I'm going to call it .txt. I'm going to hit that button here, and then I'm going to double click, and I can see now that it looks like a whole bit of gobbledygook, right? But the only thing that I'm concerned with is that I want to add something to the manifest. So right, you'll see this for every single EPUB 3 that is created. All you want to do is head to the very end and take our existing code again. Make sure that you change what you need to have changed. So you change this because we have player overlay. So you change that. You put in the name of your M4V or you put in the name of your audio. And then you just take this line here, copy it, and then you place it inside this particular section here. And as you can see, we've actually done that already. So it's here for the older version of that particular Moby Book file, Moby Dick file. So I would go ahead and I would just go ahead and save this and I would close it. And then I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to head back to this actual section here. So the next step is that I want to go ahead and change this from being txt back to an OPF. So now what I've done is effectively I've amended my OPF file and I've amended the chapter that I want to place my video in. And I'm going to go ahead and copy these two files. I'm going to double click in this particular section in my EPUB, which is now a zip of course. Double click it and then all I've got to do is to go ahead and paste. It's going to ask me if I want to copy and replace it, and I can say copy and replace, because that's what you really want, because you've added the new code to it. Copy and replace. Once you've done that, I head back out, and I'm going to F2 again, and change this from the zip to the EPUB. And once you've done that, your EPUB is now an enhanced EPUB. So now, in order to test this to make sure it works, you're going to go to a website called Bookish. And the way how that's actually typed in is B-O-O-K-I.S-H. And it's absolutely free to become a member of Bookish and get your own library. Now, once you've done that, you want to upload the very same book that you just created. And what I'm going to show you is what we created and uploaded it and to make sure that your book is actually working as an enhanced EPUB, you're going to follow these simple steps. So I'm going to load my entire library, and here is, of course, Moby Dick. And I'm going to continue reading Moby Dick, because I've looked on it before, and we're going to see exactly what's going on in that particular book. So we're reading the ebook or the EPUB online right now, and this is what it's, it would look like if someone is reading it on their mobile device, whether it's a Kindle or the Apple um, iPod, um, iPad or whatever it is that you work, you're, you're looking on, Google Nexus, whatever it is, this is exactly what it's going to look like. So I'm going to flip to the pages and as you can see, the video is added and I can just go ahead and click the button and you can see Gregory Peck and the video is live. Very, very simple, very, very easy. So I can also look on that really, really great book from her student, which is Malicious History. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to head to that video. So I'm going to look and her video pops up playing the way how it's supposed to play. And I created that in just a few minutes using the exact same method I just showed you, using the code that we have. And a couple of hours later, Malicious History is now live in Amazon as a Kindle edition with audio and video quickly, easily, and very, very straightforward. It's not a very, very difficult process for you to go through. So you want to ensure that you follow those simple steps, those very, very simple, straightforward steps to get your book to become an enhanced EPUB. Now the code, of course, is kind of a little bit technical, but you know, don't really worry about that because we have a really, really great offer for you to get that particular code. It's very, very simple. It takes you a couple of minutes in order to get that done. So what is also very important when you're submitting your enhanced ebooks? You want to note that KDP as a digital platform does not accept enhanced ePubs, but the reality is that Kindle does. So what KDP has actually said is that they can't tell if a video is duplicate content. They really have to depend on the honesty of publishers to do that, which they're not prepared to do for ordinary individuals who are self-publishing. And so it kind of limits that self-publishing. So I, I wouldn't accept that. And so I created my own version to be able to upload my own Kindle enhanced books. And that is, of course, through Speedy Publishing. And you're going to be able to get that as well. So we're going to give you a really, really great offer or opportunity to start publishing your enhanced books. Very, very simple, very, very easy, and very, very straightforward. Okay, so Einstein basically says publishing enhanced ebooks means obviously more sales because it's a totally different market. It's not the ordinary ebook market. It also makes your books relevant and useful for the future. And it protects your investment from what is known as technological erosion, which is what we described when you, when you had people moving from a scroll to a book, to a handwritten book, to a print book, and then of course on to the next generation of ordinary ebooks, and now to the future of publishing, which are of course enhanced ebooks. And the reality is, you don't want to get technologically eroded, and bottom line, plain Jane, you just want to make more royalties. That's just the reality of the situation. So let's now move on to the next strategy, which is called library and love. And the key here is, is that we want to look on why it's so important for self publishers to make their books available to individuals, to, sorry, to libraries, so that they can actually purchase those books. We're going to do that by looking on a few facts. So fact one. Libraries are moving towards ebook models. That is the truth. Approximately 44% of a budget for every single library is spent on salaries. And that's way too high. So what you find is the next fact, where savvy librarians believe that a Netflix model is best. And if you think about Netflix, what Netflix basically does is that they use a subscription model which is similar to what libraries do. So what libraries basically go ahead and do is that they say, okay, if you're a patron of a library, you pay your library dues. If you're a member, if you're you know, a customer of Netflix, you pay what is typically known as your subscription, right? And you're able to access content for free if the content is there. And that's typically what libraries and savvy librarians believe will work for libraries. But one of the key things is, is that how do you actually tell, you know, if the person wants to watch that movie, when I go on Netflix, there are movies that I'm looking for that I don't see. And so it kind of makes me mad sometimes, darn, you know, doesn't Netflix have this? But it's the reality is that it's not there. And it's a similar thing with libraries too. But that's the direction that libraries are moving into. And they believe that that's the way it's going to work. The next fact is that circulation or borrowing is growing at a phenomenal rate for ebooks in libraries. And the PCG library budget and predictions has been looking on that. And the key here, when circulation goes up or borrowing goes up, it means at the end of the day that libraries are really and truly seeing a little bit more in terms of patronage. More and more people are coming to borrow and borrow and borrow. And at the end of the day, libraries need to spend more on their collection. And that's the term that you use 
when they're purchasing books. So it sounds very funny as a credit administrator when I hear the word collections, libraries have a collections department, which is very weird. But the key here is, is that that is the reality and that's how it works. They collect books and they collect books for their patrons. So what you want to look on is that libraries spent over a billion dollars on collection in 2012. And in this particular small chart that you're looking on here, it kind of shows that between 2011 and 2012, there was a small dip on the percentage spent on ebooks. But that has risen in 2013. And more and more and more libraries, as they begin to try and fit in with the new generation, have been spending more on ebooks. And the way how you're actually going to take you know, real benefit or how you as an author are going to profit from this is very, very simple. The way to do this is Overdrive.com. So Overdrive.com is the leading distributor to libraries globally for electronically delivered content from publishing companies. And so Overdrive serves 27,000 schools and public libraries worldwide. The key here is that in those 27,000 schools and public libraries, you have well over 50 to 60 million patrons that are spread across those different libraries and schools. And that's something that you cannot turn a, turn a blind eye to, that there is a market and the gatekeepers for those particular individuals are libraries. And as collection begins to grow, then that's something that you want to actually see. You want to get your books there. So how do you go about doing that? So the first thing is you want to get in the Overdrive library. So do you remember that book, Malicious History by our student? We're going to look in the Overdrive library to see if we find Malicious History. So I'm going to go ahead and click that link. And there you have it, Malicious History appears in Overdrive. So that's all well and good. So what ends up happening is that Overdrive now takes malicious history and feeds that to the libraries out there. And libraries like the New York Public Library is one of those libraries that Overdrive feeds. So what we're going to do is that we're going to head over to the New York Public Library and we're going to look to see if we can find their ebook section. So let's go ahead and explore. So we're going to explore their ebooks. I'm going to click on that link. And what we want to do is that we want to go ahead and look for malicious history. So we're going to start off, first of all, by looking on malicious history. And we're going to look for something known as additional titles. What this basically means is, is that you can now find all the titles that the New York Public Library has at their disposal. Very, very important to understand that term. So I'm going to click on additional titles, and I'm going to hit the search button. So on the New York Library website, we have the book Malicious History, and it appears here because Overdrive has fed that book into the library. But there are two th things that you want to remember. Having gotten through the first step of getting on Overdrive, you want to make sure that the libraries buy your books. So there are two ways to do this. The first thing is, is that if you are a member of the New York Public Library and you get into here and if you, whatever library you, you're attending and Overdrive feeds that, the next step is to hit what is known as the recommend button. What this recommend button does is that it sends a message over to the back end of the New York Public Library that a patron has recommended buying this particular book. So what happens is that a series of recommendations, in fact, three recommendations, will trigger what is known as an auto-buy. So without the librarian actually having to go look on a book and decide whether or not she's going to collect it or blah, 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 what happens is, is that the patrons are the ones who recommend the book. And so that triggers an automatic purchase, and your book will now appear in the New York Library. What's more important is that if an individual comes here, they find this particular title, it fits what they want because they've, they've been able to read the description, and they can learn a bit more about who the author is by clicking on reviews and more. 
and they realize that the library doesn't have this book and they're not willing to wait, they click on what is known as the Buy It Now button right from the library. So the library itself now operates as a retailer for you. And the way how that works is that they get a little bit of money from whether it's going to be here, Barnes & Noble or Powell's eBooks when you buy, when someone buys that particular book. So the New York Library, if I was a member, would get a little bit of money. They'd get a bit of money for sure if I was to say, I'm not willing to wait on that. I want to buy the book now. I hit the Buy It Now button and I'm taken over to Barnes & Noble and I purchase this book. What ends up happening is that the New York Library would get a little change and they'd get some affiliate income. And this is one of the reasons why they do this. And it works very, very well for both discovery and sales. So you want to get your books in front of libraries. So we're going to look at a live test of this for a library that I know and I'm a part of. So I'm going to go over to the Broward County, Florida Library. And I'm going to look for malicious history. So I'm going to click on that link. And we're going to look and we don't see it because this library has not bought it. But I'm the writer for Malicious History and I'm also a part of this particular library. So I'm going to click on don't see the titles you were hoping to find. I'm going to click on that link and I'm going to look for Malicious History. So I can see that the book appears here and apparently what is happening is that this, this is basically just being uploaded. And in order to do this, all I have to do is to actually log into my account. So I'm going to hit that sign in button really quickly. I'm going to click on sign in. And now I'm signed into the library. I'm going to hit the recommend button. And I'm going to either say notify me by email if the library purchases this title or place me on the holds list if my library purchases this title. And I can put in my email address here and I can confirm it and I can recommend the title. Right? So it's a very, 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 very simple thing. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, it doesn't allow you to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and enter that information in here. And I can click on recommend the book. And now the book is recommended to the particular library and I've been placed on a hold. So once the library purchases the book, I'll be able to log in and I'll be able to get the book because the book will now be on hold for me. Very, very simple, very, very easy. And I can even go ahead and recommend that book by giving it five stars. So at this particular stage, what I'm really doing is that I'm saying to the library, buy this book, buy this book, buy this book. And that's one of the critical things that you want to be able to utilize in order to drive libraries to purchase your books once they appear on the overdrive system. And so the key here is, is that you want to make sure that you get your books into Overdrive. But there's also something that still exists that is really, really awesome and really, really cool where libraries are concerned. We want to look on something that is known as patron-driven acquisition, which is a totally different thing other than what we just showed you where recommendations work in triggering what is known as an auto buy. So what patron driven acquisition is, is that when a patron uses a book, so a patron comes to a library, they find my book Malicious History and they download that book. Now when they're reading that book, if they pass beyond a certain agreed upon threshold, so if they go beyond let's say 10% of the book, what will actually happen is that the book will be automatically purchased by that library. What it really does is that it makes sure that a patron wants that content and drives the purchasing policy or procedure of that specific library. So it's really what the patrons want, they will actually get. And so the library is charged and I, as a self-publisher, ka-ching, get paid. And it's built on what the patron actually wants. And the patron never knows 
that the book was not a part of the library collection. So at that time, in discovering and learning about this, I wanted to make sure months ago that Overdrive, the source that I utilized to, of course, push our books, had this feature available. So I wrote to them, and they wrote back, and this is what they basically said. Hi, Colin. Overdrive does offer a PDA option to our library partners under what is known as the Win or Want It Now catalog feature which supports exposing the full catalog of our publishing partners to users browsing that specific library catalog. So what that meant was that if I'm browsing, I can actually go ahead and read the book. And if I clicked on that book, downloaded it, and read more than five or six pages, it would trigger an automatic purchase. So what was clear to me here was that obviously people could game the system and just keep on you know telling people to go there and of course you know purchase 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 or read 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 and it would trigger an automatic purchase but there's a much easier way to do that what you want to do is to follow those listings that I told you innovate make sure your content has the right type of title make sure it's something that people want to learn about make sure it's a keyword rich term that people would be actively searching for very, very important. And if you get into that library catalog, an individual now knows that their library is a search tool, just like anywhere else, they're going to head there. And what's going to end up happening is that they are going to force the library to actually purchase your book because they want to read your content for free. And hence, you can see just how powerful just getting into a library is and why it's important for every single self-publisher to make that particular step. So Einstein says, get your books into libraries so you get discovered. Get your books into libraries so you obviously will get more sales. And get books into libraries so you can drive your own sales. And that is one of the key things and key strategies that we're using right now. And it's working tremendously in terms of getting back sales. And the bottom line is, just plain Jane, you want more royalties. So I wanted to go ahead and double check with you if we're doing pretty okay here, if everything is awesome, and if you kind of see what we're doing. So we're looking on enhanced ebooks and the importance of you even taking an, an existing book and pushing that book into an enhanced version and placing that book on Kindle with audio and video and making sure that book goes live in literally hours. When we push our books, it comes out in less than 24 hours. Typically, we've done that before and we've seen our book go live in Kindle, audio and video in just about three hours. Now, you can also see why it's so important to make sure your books are available to libraries and why it can lead to tremendous sales or supplement your sales even if you're pushing your content elsewhere. So I wanted to make sure that everyone was following, if it's okay, if they are, if, if you are actually seeing how powerful this is. And if you are, don't worry, because there is more to come. So let's move on to the next lesson, which is, of course, called Google Books Fever, and why I personally love Google Books. So. The first thing, again, that we want to look on, which is very, very important, is that we want to start off by taking stock of what are known as facts. And there are three simple facts about Google and Google Books that every single author needs to know. Fact one, Google as a search engine totals approximately 5 billion average searches every single day. It is the most used resource on the planet. It is no longer a noun, it is now a verb. In the past, we would know Yahoo, and we know Yahoo as being the known or the, the search engine. Now people say Google it. It's now a verb. Very, very important. It's a very, very, very powerful platform. And anything that generates almost more than half of the total number of people that live on this planet is very important and very critical for us as authors to take stock of. The second thing to note is that Google itself has created an operating system that runs on tablets and small computers, 
known as the Android. So when you get a Google phone or something like the Google Nexus, this is generated basically by or run by the Android tablet. And the key thing about this is that this quarter alone for 2013, the Android sales or tablets using the Android have grown by 74%. They have dwarfed Apple with its iOS at 14.4% in growth, the Windows Phone at only 2% in growth, and the BlackBerry Phone, which is typically, if not all but dead, um, has seen literally no growth. So Android has literally taken the storm by market. That's the second fact that as an author you need to take note of. The third fact is that Google has gotten extremely aggressive with its sales of Google eBooks. If you were online and happened to visit Google or Google Play, you would have seen that Google knocked off up to 75% for specific titles in the Google Play Store. This is massive because they saw a lot of sales that were coming from Android devices and even on the web through the Google Play Store. And so they began to put out a very aggressive move in terms of dealing or selling those particular books that they are actually putting out there for publishers and self-publishers like me. And this is very, very important. So why do we really and truly need to take stock of this? The first thing is, is that in order for any business to work, there are two things that are critical that you must know. A is the competition in the market, and B, the actual market size. So Google has both and more. So with low competition in Google Books or the Google Play Store, and a growing market, as evidenced by what's happening with the growth of the Android OS, you stand a perfect opportunity of making a literal killing in the Google Play Store with your eBooks. What's even more important is that Google Play has access to global markets. So let's head over to the Google Play Store and let's see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're over here at Google Play, and what we're going to do is we're going to search for a term that is typically a good term, one of the terms that we've added to our niche reports, what we deliver in Speedy Publishing, which is a really good term, what we like, which is called clean eating. So I'm going to search for the term clean eating. And what makes me feel so proud is that immediately, out of apps, movies, the newsstand, and devices, the first thing that comes up is books. And in this listing of books, this is one of our books that appears for clean eating. Here is another book that also appears for clean eating. And we do this easily, simple, straightforward. If you're at home, wherever you are in the world, go ahead and head to the Google Play Store test it yourself anywhere you are in the world. It will give you the same exact results. We didn't have to do any SEO. We didn't have to do anything out of the ordinary. We made sure that our titles or books had a title that people were searching for. How about another great title like Adrenal Fatigue? Now, in cases, you'll find that apps kind of take precedence over these particular books. And this is typically the case with adrenal fatigue, where the apps now take precedence. However, if you look on the book section and someone is looking for information to read about adrenal fatigue, here is a speedy publishing book, here's another speedy publishing book, and here is another speedy publishing book. So what if we were to look on let's say a term that I consider probably very, 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 very technical, very, 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 very popular. 
how about barbecue recipes? And if we all like barbecue recipes, you'd probably think to yourself, this is dramatically you know, um, very, very competitive. If you wanted to rank for that particular keyword term, even on Amazon, there are thousands and gazillions of books, whether it's going to be physical or, or, or ebook in Kindle format or anything like that, that is basically what happens. It's very, 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 very difficult for you to rank for that. But is that the case with the Google Play Store that dominates the Android OS? Let's look for barbecue recipes. So here we go with barbecue recipes. And what's the first thing that I'm seeing here? This is a speedy publishing book. This is a speedy publishing book. And this is a speedy publishing book. You can test this for yourself again anywhere you are in the world. This is literally zero competition in a growing market where you can dominate with the very same niches that you're using to dominate elsewhere. Very important, very easy to do. All you're required to do is to get your books in the Google Play Store. And that's the, I can probably say if it takes me a day to do probably 20 or 30 books, if I had them in Microsoft Word, to get them into the Google Play Store, that would be literally an overstatement in terms of time because it can take you less than a day to do a lot of books and get them here. Very simple, very straightforward, a growing market that has little or no competition. And those two things are the key for success. So again, I don't want you to say that you end up trusting the skinny chef. So let's take a look on the proof in the pudding. And this is just a snapshot of what I took for yesterday in our Google Play account. And one of the things that jumped out to me, and I just discussed with James because I had no idea what some of these countries or where these, some of these countries were. So you can see here that sales are coming in through the Google Store or the Google Play Store in Australia, Great Britain, Canada, the US, and SG that I had no idea what it was until James just told me, which is Singapore. And we've got more sales from Canada, the Great, Great Britain, uh, the US, Brazil, a little bit more in the US, Great Britain. And when I saw this, I was absolutely shocked where it said $129. So I said, did someone actually buy my book for $129? It's actually no. This is actually in India, and it's, of course, rupees. So it's going to come back to the very same level of conversion there, right? So that's the critical thing. But the proof is in the pudding. The writing is on the wall. The reality here is, is that there is a market to literally be had in Google Play and Google eBooks. So you want to make sure that you get your content into that particular market and start pushing your books. So let's put it all together. Publishing enhanced eBooks can end up giving you twice the amount of royalties. Selling to libraries can push your sales dramatically. And here's a quick reason why. When a library purchases your book, they're not going to purchase your book for what they would purchase your book on Kindle or Barnes & Noble or anywhere else. Because libraries purchase your book to lend to others, there is a premium rate charged. So if your book is typically selling for about 99 elsewhere and you're getting a percentage from that, a library will purchase your book for possibly five or six times that amount because they intend to lend that book out to other people. The key thing that you want to remember is that if you can craft your book and of course put other books or not directly links but other information about other titles that you have, individuals will discover your book and discover other books that you also have. And of course, they can either buy those books or they can go ahead and try to borrow that book. And if it's not purchased by the library, it will end up, the library will end up triggering an automatic sale and you will be paid the same multiple for that second book. So 
the profits are endless literally with libraries and we believe that they will eventually move into a Netflix model where they severely reduce that amount of cash that they're spending on salaries and wages and other expenses and start putting the majority of that cash into content acquisition and when that happens you want to be poised you want to be put in a position you want to be in that position where you can get your content into those libraries or you're already feeding those libraries with your existing content and finally publishing on Google Play no competition almost whatsoever you're going to be able to dominate some of the best niches that you can possibly think of and get your content in front of individuals and sell 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 more and more and more everyone basically knows that there are really great keywords that are out there that people are searching and as more and more individuals have access to the Android OS and devices that are run by the Android OS that they will begin to use the Google Play the Google Play Store to search for whether it's apps movies or other types of content and which will invariably lead to sales so it's typically a no-brainer these are three great strategies that you can implement right now with your existing books and get them selling very very quickly and begin to resuscitate or to really and truly drive additional and supplemental income at the end of the day for your publishing business. So there actually is more. <laughs> so the reality here is is that I wanted to ask you if you think that these strategies are typically easy to implement because once you've created your book it's very very easy to get it distributed. If you realize that this doesn't really take a lot of work to create an enhanced ebook it can't take you 30 minutes to do that once you get the hang of it it's very very simple it's really if you can copy and paste that's basically it and you follow exactly you know whatever training you have to do this you can get your enhanced ebooks or even your existing ebooks out into the Kindle uh, audio and video store and more importantly you can get it into the Apple iBook store and that's literally you know a novel location that we weren't we don't have enough time to kind of go into that but that's another really great place for you to begin to publish your content too based on what Apple has been doing but if you're seeing this you would know that of course with just a few simple steps you can increase your revenue so I'd like to make you a very very exclusive and special offer and I want to ask your permission to go ahead and do that if you could just type yes in the chat box if excellent excellent awesome okay great okay so how would you actually like 50 more strategies just like the ones I gave you strategies to increase your royalties publish your books faster and easier get push button marketing with free press releases get profitable niche reports just literally handed to you every single month get cutting edge marketing strategies get your books on every retail platform you can think of in just a few minutes publish your content to hundreds of retailers get writers to even send you manuscripts learn how to adequately sell ad space in your books and get new strategies just like these every single week for your life and there's more how would you like to publish your books to 38,000 different retailers strategically published to retailers you choose so if you're publishing on Amazon don't worry about it you don't have to select Amazon to publish to you can publish to everyone else including overdrive and including Google ebooks in just a click of a button. You can publish your enhanced ebooks to Kindle and everywhere else. You can get your books listed in libraries. Get free ISBNs for your existing books. Get your books listed in the Apple iBook Store, Barnes and Noble, retailers like Books a Million, and other retailers, including those 38,000 retailers that we're talking about. Get your book promoted on social media via Facebook, get your book listed on goodreads.com, remember we spoke about you need to go to where readers are, publish your ebook, your print book, audiobook, 
enhanced ebook and within a couple of days we're going to have the live publication of apps you can also if you've not published before go ahead and submit your content to us and apply to receive what is known as a Library of Congress number where you're now going to be able to get your content as a physical book into a library and more importantly new retailers are added every single month to our distribution we recently added Flipkart, which is a, a, um, a retailer out of India. So Flipkart will now be pushing speedy publishing books. So if you'd like to get all of this, I wanted to make you an exclusive offer to join speedy publishing. And in joining speedy publishing, what we're going to be doing is giving you two great services for one really great price. So the first service you're going to get is speedy publishing training, which includes over 100 plus hours of cutting edge training, just like what you went through a while ago. You're going to get plug and play templates, which will allow you to go ahead and help to create your EPUBs. You get unlimited press release distributions, monthly hot Kindle niche reports. We do weekly lessons and weekly speedy nuggets where we give you tips and hints on how to publish your content. We give you an Amazon marketing niche using something that we created where we figure out exactly what Amazon is marketing and give you those niches so that you can profit from that as well. We also have a really great private Facebook group and you gain access to the new training modules every week. So with Speedy Publishing Training, you're also going to get access to Speedy Publishing Distribution. That includes distributing your content and your titles and your books to over 38,000 retailers, including the Apple iBook Store, Google eBooks, Overdrive, Books a Million, and so much other retail channels. You also get the opportunity to upload your enhanced eBooks. That's very, very simple, and in just a matter of hours, your ebooks will go live in the Kindle audio and video store. You get selective distribution. If you're already publishing to Amazon, or you're already publishing to Barnes and Noble and Kobo and the Apple iBookstore, opt out. You have the opportunity to do that. Selective distribution. We also assign a free ISBN to every single format of book that you're, you're distributing. So if you've got your print book, your audio book, your, uh, your enhanced ebook, your uh, print book, your, your regular digital ebook, your app, every single one of those, we assign an ISBN to them. An ISBN is critical in getting your books into what is known as books in print, which is the largest resource of books out there. And what books in print does is that many, many retailers and affiliates take the books in print feed. This means that your books will appear on retailers that we don't even know about, that are not included in the 30,000 retailers, that take the feed from books in print, place your book up there. When a book is sold, it's going back to whether it's going to be Amazon or Barnes & Noble or wherever that affiliate is an affiliate of. So if that person is taking that exact feed, they're marketing your book for you, and that's the power of books in print. Of course, you can get your Library of Congress number, but of course, there are stipulations. Your book has to have a specific number of pages, and we assess your book before we go ahead and make that application for a Library of Congress number for you. More importantly, we do things that will drive individuals to your books through things such as social media setup. So we place your titles and your cover on a particular web page that we created for each particular imprint or publishing company that we own. So what we basically do is that we drive traffic through Facebook for individuals who are interested in that specific topic. So one of our imprints, such as Pets Unchained, what we basically do is that we drive traffic into this particular imprint. When you publish your book and your book goes live, we place that book 
here, your cover, and of course a sales page link. What that does is that we're placing your book in front of the audience that wants to see that type of content. And it gives you the author the opportunity to begin to feed on those individuals and create your own community if you see the need. And of course, at the end of the day, what you want to do is to create that community, then to develop your own audience and begin to, of course, sell them your, your type of content. And finally, as we mentioned before, very, very important, when you publish through Speedy Publishing, your books are automatically placed on Goodreads. You don't need to go there. You don't need to try and add your book to Goodreads. It happens automatically through our distribution agreement with our distribution partner, Ingram. So what would happen is that automatically your book appears on Goodreads. You can send your friends over to go ahead and like your book, read your book, and leave a really, really good review. And the great thing about Goodreads is that Goodreads drives reviews for websites like Kobo. So if your book appears on Goodreads and you're getting a really good number of comments, when people find your books on Kobo, they're going to see the Goodreads comments and that's going to basically help with your sales on Kobo. So it's very important to place your books on Goodreads and through Speedy Publishing, that automatically happens. So we also have a couple of bonuses. And the first bonus, of course, is our Skype coaching call. So if you're one of the first 25 people to sign up tonight, then you're going to get a 90-minute group call. So all of us are going to be on that call. And what I'm going to be doing is just hot seating all of the books that you have. So if you've got books and you want to get some you know, feedback on what you can do to improve your sales, what we'll be doing is we'll be looking on each one of those books I'll be opening up the line, speaking to you directly so that everyone can benefit from what it is that you're saying and we can figure out a way to kind of make sure that you're making more sales. Next, of course, you have access to the private Facebook group. And this is a members-only Facebook group that includes not just self-publishers, but authors, joint venture publishers, audio narrators, and more. We also have a really great program called the 4-Hour Outsourcing Program. You can find that program in our downloading sec in our in our resource area on our website. So this actually includes five modules of training videos on how to build your own outsourcing army of virtual assistants that will help you in your publishing business. We also have a really great training course on Amazon FBA. Now Amazon FBA can help you if you're selling books of a particular variety and in a particular manner. But delving more into that course will also help you with your publishing business. You also get beta access to Speedy Book Publisher. And this is one of our critical types of software that we've been working on over a period of time that will now and eventually allow you to be able to publish an EPUB through your existing MS Word. Now the process is very, very uh, strenuous. It takes quite a bit of time. So we're continuously working to improve Speedy Book Publisher. And once we go ahead and release the next update, it will be able to publish an EPUB. And that's one of the most important things that you need in following up on these particular strategies. And finally, we have a really great course, which is called the Kindle Sales Pages. And that gives you advanced training on how to actually make sure that your Kindle sales page converts more. One of the great things is, is driving traffic to your sales page will, of course, result in sales, but you have to make sure that your sales page is ready to convert. And finally, what we wanted to look on was your 30-day money-back guarantee. If you test drive the Speedy Publishing System and it's really not for you and you, you, know, you, you want to get your money back, which I'm not, I'm not sure why you'd want to, but if you do, then we have a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked, drop in your email to our dedicated help desk and we'll get you your refund immediately. So you can test drive the system, test drive the distribution, see how the process works and then if it's something that you're not thinking that it's right for you at that time, then you can go ahead and drop us a line and get your refund and so this is zero risk to you at all. So if you want to actually get access immediately to Speedy Publishing, both the training and the distribution, for an entire year, you'll get access to distribution and you get lifetime access to speedy publishing training. 
so you can become a lifetime member of Speedy Publishing Training and get that one year access into the distribution model where you can get library and enhanced ebook distribution and access to new training every single week. So all you've got to do is head over to joinspeedy.com and head to the end of the page and hit the add to cart button. Once you go ahead and purchase and sign up, you'll get your information in terms of your login and username and password immediately along with the remaining information on how to begin to access your distribution. So guys, that basically completes our presentation. Um, James, back over to you so that we can probably go through some questions. Wow, Colin, that was great, great stuff, man. Absolutely Thanks. amazing. Uh, the, awesome. the comments coming in from people are just absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. Uh, let me actually, let me read a few of these because people are saying this is the best training they have ever received which uh, oh, is saying thanks. a lot. It's um, very humbling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we do have we do have quite a few questions. So I've been flagging the questions as we go. Awesome. So nice. let's just go over a couple. Of, yeah, uh, EM says, and this is fabulous training. Fabulous. Um, let's go over a couple of the commonly asked questions here, and that is number one: people are a little bit confused. Some people are confused about um, the lifetime access. And the one the um, one ninety seven per year. So let's explain what that means. Um, okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, lifetime access means that, from what I understand, and Colin, correct me if I'm I'm wrong, but lifetime access is for the speedy publishing training. Exactly. You get lifetime access to the training with all the updates. You send out updates every single week, right? Every single week. I know because I get my speedy nuggets every single week. <laughs> I love it. Colin has this newsletter that comes out every week. I mean, this is one of the things I absolutely love. It's called Speedy Nuggets. And Speedy Nuggets is just all the things that he's added to the site in the past week. And it's just, you know, it's like a one page, very quick read with fabulous information. So look forward awesome. to getting that every single week. So if you, you know, you purchase tonight, then you get the uh, training for life. And the, exactly. the one year thing is for the distribution service. Exactly. So Colin has a relationship. How many different uh, 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 media do you publish on? Um, what we basically do is that we try to, you know, help our authors. We publish on it, you know, print ebook, print regular print books, um, digital regular digital ebooks. Uh, we also publish apps. We also publish uh, enhanced ebooks, of course. A large print. Um, we're basically just getting into what is known as refreshable braille um, on a serious scale. Um, so that's a different type of media. In terms of the retail platforms, thirty-eight thousand and more. Thirty-eight thousand. Okay, that's yeah. what I was getting. Yeah, retail yeah. platforms. That's what I was <laughs> retail platforms. Yeah. And the main, you know, the main ones are Kindle, mm -hmm. um, iBookstore. Yeah, Apple iBookstore. Mm -hmm. iBookstore. Um, Barnes and Noble, Barnes, Barnes and Noble, yeah. Kobo. There, there are a whole range of them, James. And the key thing here is, is that um, I think what happens is that a lot of individuals get stuck on KDP Select because they say, okay, well, people can borrow my books. That is very true. But the reality here is, is that if your books appear on over, let's say, even 500 different retailers, let's just leave out the, the remaining 37,500. Um, what do you think the likelihood is going to be if your books, you know, are going to sell more than what they're borrowed on Amazon? Very, very great. What would happen? Absolutely, if your books? absolutely. Yeah. And, and, right. and here's another commonly asked question: Is how much commission does Speedy Publishing take when a book sells? Fifteen percent. Okay, that's fifteen one five percent. That's very the low, and, the let me lowest tell you, one in the market. The, the <laughs> additional distribution that you will get. Right. from publishing through Collins Company will more than make up for that 15 percent. And let me tell you, I've got a, another customer of mine who has a publishing company and they give the authors 20 percent and they keep 80 percent. That's right. Okay? They, they get, let me say that again. Other companies are keeping 80 percent. Collins is only taking 15 percent, not 50, 15. So it's a huge, huge advantage. And like I said, just the added distribution to all these different channels will more than make up for that. Now, 
here is the big thing that I think people are really interested in, Colin, or at least some people are really interested in. People who cannot publish to Kindle now because for whatever reason, their accounts have been banned or blocked or banished. Mm -hmm. They can publish through you, correct? Yep. Yes, they can. All right, so that is the solution for people who no longer have a Kindle account. You publish through Colin. Now, mm -hmm. of course, Colin is not going to allow you to do anything that's going to um, to piss off the Kindle guard, <laughs> the Kindle gods, so to speak. Right, right Colin? Right. I mean, you well, you well it's, it's something that's clear, James, because you don't want to – I mean, if you remember, we had this description image magic in the past, and it's pretty obvious. When I met with some of the guys at VEA for Kindle, and I spoke to them, I actually showed a couple of them, you know, adding an image into your description um, on the Amazon Kindle. And they didn't even know about this because Amazon Kindle and Office Central are two separate departments. They're in the same organization, but they're two separate departments that really don't really, you know, join, kind of talk to each other every day because they don't need to. The reality here is, is that people started putting in videos, which was bad and not so bad at the time, but then people started putting in email capture forms. And if you think about it, if you're Jeff Bezos and you're the owner of Amazon and you're spending up to $8 million every month on AdWords and someone comes and puts you know, an email capture form on your website, you would freak out. So <laughs> they made it extremely bad for everyone by doing that till Amazon had to say, okay, well, we're going to just kill everything that you have and block everything coming in from Alpha Central. But it would have worked and it would have remained. And in fact, even some of our own books still have that up. I think what they really wanted to do was to get rid of those guys who were doing that. And it's just pretty obvious. Don't do anything untoward, right? Think of Amazon as your friend and work with them to sell more of your content. If you try and do anything untoward, they have millions and millions of people who they work with and sell to. You're just one individual. So it profits you none to kind of do something that is not sustainable for you that's only going to lead to a couple of leads and then what happens, your account is shut down and you're banished from Kindle. But if you have been and something went wrong and you, you weren't even able to, to speak with the Kindle gods, I mean, go ahead, bring your content to us. We can get you on back on the Kindle and your content back on the Kindle. And of course, add that different element of marketing to it as well and getting your content to other platforms at the same time. And you still have the option of selective distribution as well. You can choose where you want to put, put that, your books too. So, All right. That's... Excellent. And I, I've already got several people that said that they've joined tonight. So congratulations awesome. on that. And let us know in the chat here because we do have one bonus that's only available to the first 25 people. And that is, Colin, will you go over that bonus again, the one that's only available to the first 25? Okay. So basically what we're going to do is that we're going to go through a hot seat. I have a mastermind with a couple of our members that we do. We're doing a six-week mastermind, but we're going to take basically one day uh, in the week of the ninth, and we're going to meet with the 21st, 25 signups. And I want you to get your books ready and get your content ready, and tell me about whether you, even if you haven't published, and you you're in pre-publish mode, or you have published your book and it's not really doing as much as you'd want it to, or it's really doing well and you want to try and leverage that and try and get more money from it, we're going to be going over your 25 books and we're going to be opening up the line so you can actually speak so everyone can hear you. And when you go ahead and do that, it helps because every single one of those webinars we've had, um, the last one we did almost went to like three hours. And the thing is, is that you want to give everyone the opportunity to kind of clear the air up and tell us exactly what their plans are and how they would want to you know, move their books forward. And we advise them. And even other people who have been on the call have been able to chime in and say, you know, hey, like Beth, you can do this. Did you know we, we're looking on your books? So it's kind of like a really, really good forum of individuals who are self-publishers who, um, who sit in and chime in on how to kind of put some more oomph behind your book. So that's for the first 25 people. We can't really do it with more than 25 people, and we normally go to, um, to you know, probably almost sometimes three hours, four hours on that particular call. All right, so you heard that, the first 25 people, and go ahead and just let us know so we can uh, kind of keep track of it here. And I'm going to go on with some more questions here, but i got to warn you, though, I have tons of questions. So <laughs> we're going to cover as many as we can possibly get through awesome. or get to. 
And awesome. let's go ahead and uh, go. So with the um, enhanced media that you were showing before, Colin, mm -hmm. how can you avoid violating copyright laws when doing this? Um, it's pretty simple. Um, if you go ahead and you're downloading stock videos, and then you go ahead and piece those stock videos together, and then you create, you put your own audio behind them, it's very, very simple. If something is available for free online, typically you don't want to use that. It, it just leads to a bad experience, right? If you think about yourself as a retailer, if someone purchases a book from you, and it has a video in there with content, and they easily find that content online, that person who bought it doesn't know who you, the author, are. They have no idea. They just know your name. It could be, even be a pen name. They're going to be peeved at the retailer, and then they're going to leave that retailer and not come back because that retailer sold them you know, freely available content on the web. So the key here is, is that in order for you to kind of avoid things like that, that will put you in hot water with that retailer, and more importantly, someone might come and say, you've got content that belongs to me. Um, source your own content. Get individuals to get you get create the content for you, or use places. You've got also Pond, and use places like what we're talking about. Um, in a, uh, let me give you the name quickly. It's just eluded me. Video blocks, and you can use video blocks. You can download a series of those videos and piece them together, creating your own work. And that's not something that's very difficult. One of the things that we look on Mastermind is that. When you're creating a you know a book like this, we talked about books, books, which are video books, and we've been doing this for quite some time, James. James, and you, what we do is that we just compile these videos. You just put them together, and it's almost like National Geographic. You can just use your own voice, and you speak over the videos, and you talk about this is the lion or this is the rhino. Here's some chicken fightings. Here you've got a wildebeest who is watering at the hole. And you put all of those videos together, it now becomes almost like a National Geographic documentary. And you add some content below that. So you put a video out there, you speak about the video, you put some information about the wildebeest, you put some information about the lion. You can put 20, 30, 40, 50 different animals of Africa or animals of the Serengeti or wherever. That now becomes a book. Travel-wise, you can find different videos on different locations. And you can use those locations and then you can speak over those videos and put your book together. You're not going to get in trouble because you have downloaded the copyright. You've paid for that. So it's just like an image. Well, how, where, much, how much does Video Blocks charge? Is it, um, it depends. I think it's about 70 bucks for the month. But I'll be honest with you, James, when I just got started on this, um, here's what I did. I signed up for the free service and I don't for seven days. I downloaded like about 500 video clips when I was testing it just to make sure. So I literally had videos that were on specific books and titles that I could last that lasted me for a couple of months um, while I was going through my testing phase. So it's really simple. It's absolutely free for seven days. Um, after that, then it just boils down to an ROI issue. If you're going to spend like the 70 bucks for it each month, then what you want to basically go ahead and do is is that make sure that you're taking, you're making use of it. I even if I did it for a month, um, which we basically do now because we're just we're just signed up, but we're downloading tons and tons of videos every day. So it's not as if that we're not taking advantage of the service. And it's going to be, I mean, literally as you mentioned before, it's the future of ebook publishing. And, so, and I hope people get this. I mean, video blocks is just a very very simple way of getting uh, getting video that you can then. You can then do voiceover, mm -hmm. just describing what it is, or I could, I would imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, can you do a music, like a music? Uh, oh over, yeah, they've 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 got um, it's both it's both uh, video and audio. So you also get audio. So remember what we said an enhanced book is um is you know both. It, it's it's a video and audio enhancement. Oh, and you could even you could even take those. Video clips and just put captions yeah. on them. You don't have to actually speak. You exactly. can just do you can just do captions over the and by captions I mean text. Yeah, yeah you can captions also do over that. the slides. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Yep. We did okay. that. We started out with that initially. So I mean it's not a very, very difficult process at all. Okay, great. Uh, and congratulations on everyone who's just gotten in. Let me know in the chat here. I'm gonna go through the questions uh, as many as I can get to. Uh, Chris wants to know, can we use books with different pen names with your service, Colin, 
with the distribution. Oh, sure, yeah. How many, can, can, yeah. How many skin <laughs> names can we have? Um, a gazillion. We recently did a lesson on what something known as author personas and the importance of handling author personas. Um, and that's in the speedy publishing training. So when you're doing different author names, one of the things that you want to definitely stay away from is using um, titles. So don't use like doctor or you know MD or barrister or anything like that. You need to make that pen name an ordinary individual. And when you do that, you can go ahead and publish that book under that particular pen name. But you don't want to do anything, as I said, again, to make it untoward. What we right. recommend is that you can have up to 100 pen names, but you want to make sure that you manage that. And in the Speedy Publishing Training, we give you a worksheet that we actually use in-house to manage our author personas. Because you don't want John Brown to be an expert in karate and then you don't want that very same John Brown to be someone who has fibromyalgia or an expert in fibromyalgia and that same John Brown who also knows a lot about clean eating. You want to keep that particular pen name within a particular genre. Okay, and keep great. it very, very simple that way. So you've got to manage those particular author personas very, very well. And it's something that we do, so it's a strategy that we follow. So, yeah, that is in the training as well. Yeah, excellent, Chris. That was an excellent question, Chris, and I think Chris understands the, um, the usefulness of pen oh, names. Sure. Okay, yeah. uh, and Janice wants to know, oh, basically the same question. Can we publish different books on different author names? Yes. Uh, as many times as we want during the given year. Yeah. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so EEM says, how much control would I have over how – my book is marketed. Uh, for example, my Amazon sales page, etc. Et so, uh, when people use your distribution service, are they able to um, to give you the description information they want to use? Oh yeah, you upload everything. Basically, looks exactly as if you would be uploading to Kindle. We take all of your metadata. We, Do you, we is, take is it, would it be possible? Would it be possible for you to log in and show people? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that would be great. I think that will actually take care of a whole lot of the questions that we have. If people can actually <laughs> just see it. Okay. There you go. Okay. So basically, this is the login oh, this area. Is great. Yeah. Go through then, the whole thing, man. Go through the whole thing because this is great okay. stuff. <laughs> okay. So it's pretty simple. So once you're logged in here, um, this is typically your dashboard. Um, you have the option of doing digital and physical submission. This is where your sales reports um, appear. You, we also have a bookstore, and we recently signed an agreement, but I can't tell you everyone about that. So if you have a regular physical book, we have a bookstore, and of course, we promote this bookstore as well, right? So we push the sales on this bookstore. So if you, it's not just digital books that you can publish. You can publish both digital and physical, right? And that's going out to many, many retailers as well. So once you log in, the first thing you want to do is to be able to add a title. And you have the option, again, as we said, you put in your Speedy Publisher client name. So that's your name on your account. The author name, the first name, your last, the author last name, the bio, if you want to add an additional author or contributor. You put in your title, your subtitle. Then you tell us what the genre of your book is. So if your book is, let's say, children's content, and you select children's content, we publish under several different imprints. So if you decide to choose, you can choose to go ordinarily with Speedy Publishing Books, which is a general imprint, or you can choose one of our imprints, which is Speedy Kids. Now remember we had mentioned to you before that we create a Google, a, sorry, a Facebook web page for all of our imprints. So when your book eventually becomes published, we're driving traffic back to these particular Facebook pages. And then what will actually happen is that your book, and we post every day. So here's an example where you'll have an individual who this guy published his book, which is a really, really great dog book. So we add the link to your book, a description, and your cover. And what you can see here is, is that people are coming here. These are all real people. These are not strange people or you know, robots or bots. These are individuals who come here, like the cover, like the book, and will eventually, of course, go ahead and click on the sales page link. It's a way that we try, kind of try to make sure that you are able to promote your book. 
So if this was your book and you've got these guys who like your book, you can come in and you can start to engage in a conversation with these particular people. And that's one of the key things that you want to do in terms of as being an author to begin to build your audience. Very, very, very important. So the next step, once you go ahead and add in, you select your imprint, you can go ahead and of course tell us whether it has explicit content or not, choose your language, if the manuscript is a part of a series, your edition, the page count, your publish date, your street date. Street date basically refers to if you want to publish your book in the future, you can put that street date there. What will happen is that the book will still go up on the retailer, but the retailer can't sell it. So you have a street date, so it's almost like a pre-release. So that really, really helps at the end of the day. Now, we have three different things which are called short description, long description, and a main description. The reason for this is that retailers look for all three. There's some retailers who will only take your short description, like the Sony e-reader store. They typically, we've not seen them take anything but the short description. You also have the long description, which some stores actually look only for the long description. So if you don't have your stuff in there, then it, if you have nothing in there, then you won't have a description for your book, and the main description basically you know, takes the same way. Then, of course, you price your book, and then you choose whether or not you have DRM. You select your BISAC codes, because the BISAC codes are here, so I might say if I'm going into body, mind, and spirit, I can then choose whatever the BISAC code is here, so it, it could be uh, prophecy, and I'll choose that here. You put in your keywords, then you upload your file. So we take three types of files, whether it's a web-optimized PDF, a MOBI, or a valid EPUB. So you can upload either one here. And if you're uploading the enhanced version of your ebook, you select here and upload that enhanced version. Next, you can, of course, submit your physical book. So you can choose whether the interior is black and white, full color, full color with bleed. You select the paper type. We currently don't have cream. We only have white right now. And of course, you can choose your trim size. We have a range of trim sizes. And then you upload your particular book. And you can also now upload your audio manuscript. So you can upload your audio book here as well. You give us the length of your audio book and, of course, the bit rate. And then you upload your cover, your cover art, uh, and your audio book cover art. You can add what are known as supporting images. Companies like Apple, the Apple iBook Store, will take that supporting image and they'll put it in your description. So unlike with Amazon that doesn't like to do that or you don't have the option of doing that, Apple will take that particular kind of screenshot and place it in your description. If you have any social media links, you can go ahead and do that. So you've got your author, your Twitter page, um, Google page, uh, author website. Then you have, of course, you can put in an excerpt of your manuscript, any reviews that you have, the source of your review, any awards, and then you choose whether you want physical digital and audio distribution, and you can choose either one that you desire. And then that pretty much, you, once you submit that, that goes over to us. We make sure that your files are okay, send you back your information with your ISBN, and then push that content out to Ingram, which, are, which is our distribution partner. Now, once you get your book approved, you can go ahead and then choose your digital submission. So in this case here, let's take for this instance, I can now choose if I want to submit to all of these retailers here or I want to say, don't submit me to Amazon, don't submit me to Apple, um, don't submit me to Baker and Taylor, or don't submit me to Bookish or Book Manager or any one of these. You have the option of choosing which one of these platforms you don't want to be submitted to. You can also choose to select to an individual territory. So you can say, don't submit me to Afghanistan, right? Or you can choose to say, only submit me to Afghanistan. And it's the same thing with physical submission. You can choose, I can choose this book, and I can choose, say, okay, so if I'm publishing on CreateSpace, I don't want my book to go to Amazon, and I don't want my book to go to Amazon UK, right? You can choose to make that decision on your own, and you can go ahead and decide to remove either one and choose exactly those different distribution channels. And the key is a lot of these channels and marketing channels here, they themselves are, of course, uh, I would probably say aggregators. So companies like Bertram's in the UK, they push that content to thousands and thousands of retailers within the UK. 
So what happens is, is that your content is fed into Bertram's and Bertram's then pushes that content out to everyone. So you have basically that type of selective um, you know, submission and distribution. And if you want to, of course, go over everything that is there, all you've got to do is head to the video training page and you can select what you need. And when you click here, of course, the video pops up and we explain to you exactly what you need to do in terms of getting your content out. And then you can head back to the dashboard and, of course, submit more and more of your content. James, did I lose you? No, man, that's great. Man. I'm just answering questions here. And oh, awesome. Of, uh, let me get the, the next question that we have. Hang on a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Several people have asked this. Um, so how much is this service after the first year? It is the same 197 to renew. You'll be locked in for that particular price Excellent. forever. All right, and here's a really important question. Can we use Speedy to distribute our existing books and or print books? For sure. <laughs> uh, one of the key things is, is that most people don't realize when you, when you, you know, go through CreateSpace, I mean, you'll find the information in the training. When you utilize CreateSpace, there are two things that CreateSpace does that kind of prevents you from really and truly seeing the right number of sales. First, they don't allow what are known as returns, which is a very, very big deterrent. And the second thing that they do is that CreateSpace only offers a 25% discount. The traditional discount is 40%. And that's what you know really most brick and mortar stores are looking for. And just based on the fact Amazon is a, you know, it's a competitor to these brick and mortar stores. They're not going to buy the books for um for Amazon and of course place them in their own store, selling and empowering a competitor right under their nose. That's just not it, the book would have to be tremendously good in order for that to happen, which um which normally does not, you know, is typically not very well the case. Okay, and here's a question I've had several times. Um how do we convert our existing, like people have existing Kindle books, okay. so how do they convert the Kindle books into the format for speedy publishing? Or do they, oh. do they even have to worry about that? Into an EPUB? If you, we accept a Mobi, if, if, you, if you have your existing book, there are several different ways to, of course, create a Mobi. When you get into the training, we have uh, what is typically called, I'll go ahead and, and get to it very quickly. It's called Speedy Book Editor, which is typically the resource for all of what it is that or or authors who are publishing with Speedy Publishing, you know, need to know. So what happens here is that you head over to Speedy Book Editor, and we kind of teach you exactly how to create your content to make sure that we can distribute it. So we give you our best practices. We tell you how to create your digital content, how to create your print PDF interior. Um, for your regular textbooks, how to do it for your full color books, uh, creating your audio files, um, every single thing step by step by step. It's a very, very, very simple process. And how to create your own ePubs. It's quite easy. There are many, many places to do that. Very, very easy. There's easy software to get to do that as well. And typically with our templates that you find in the members area, you can actually use our templates and then submit them into different services to get your EPUBs back out. And creating an EPUB is not a very difficult thing to do. Or you can just probably head to receive and say, receive, hey, here's my book. I have 20 books or I have 30 books. Can't we do it for like three books per instead of doing it for five books per? And negotiate with him. And he'll, I'm sure he'll, he'll go ahead and do that for you because he's a really good, cool guy. So, and you have all the contractors that you can speak to. And you can take your existing books and get them converted into an EPUB. And you really need an EPUB, really, because getting your books into an EPUB will really push your book because it's a standard thing that 90% of the retailers accept. Even Google does. And so that's very, very, very important. All right. And I'm just going to read you the answer I just sent to Liz because Liz was asking about um, various uh, offers that you've made for your training over the last year or so since we've been doing these training mm -hmm. sessions. Um, I think the first one we did was December of last year, so almost a year now. Right? <laughs> almost one year anniversary. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send I'm gonna tell you the answer I gave to Liz. I said, I think this is the best offer that Colin has ever made 
I did not even know until yesterday that he was going to give people the training as well, which is true. And yesterday yeah. or the day before, I've been traveling, so I kind of get my days confused. But I didn't know until a couple of days ago that this offer was going to include all the training, which we oh, yeah. uh, or which Colin has offered in the past for four hundred ninety-seven dollars. The reason the reason is James is that again, and you know what I say. There's I don't there can't be a scarcity mentality, and one of the things that many people don't know is that we sign contracts with companies on a, you know, I'd probably say on a monthly basis or sometimes on a weekly basis. And one of those companies is adobe.com. And we signed an agreement with adobe.com to get 40% knocked off of access to Creative Cloud. We're also in the process of getting something done in terms of what is known as a service known as one or translation. Um, we tried to do something with Duolingo um, that was just not moving at the pace that I wanted it to be moving at. So we are looking on working with other individuals. There are other companies that we work with, and we try to find those particular, you know, kind of associations. And one of the things that allow us to do this is the strength of numbers. We're a, a thousand plus strong. So when we went to Adobe and said, Adobe, we need 40% off of your service for everyone who is a Speedy Publishing member. You can pick up the phone right now and get access to Adobe Creative Cloud at a 40% discount just because you are a Speedy Publishing member. And you can do the same with, I think, Print Place, which is another company that we partner with. And pretty soon, you'll be able to do that with oneorwatranslation.com. So the key here is, is that and there, there are other relationships that we have, but we look for those relationships. And because we have the strength in numbers, we bargain for those types of discounts, and we make sure that we get them so that speedy publishing members on a whole can really do that. I'm not sure, James, if you know when people talk about a consortium. When a consortium comes together, they can literally bully other people to do things. Well, in the past, many self-publishers have never kind of formed that type of group where they approach companies and really stand as, you know, in a, in a common way, in a common front, and say, look, there are services that you've been offering which are ridiculously expensive. We now have the strength in numbers. Give us the price that we think is reasonable, and we kind of push them in that direction. And companies, I won't say fold, but they kind of comply and work with us to make sure all our members get access to key things that they need to improve their publishing business. So, so you're saying that people who sign up are going to be part of a, your consortium. <laughs> it's, almost like a labor, it's almost like a labor union, right? You kind of get together. <laughs> pretty much. And, pretty much. Pretty and, much. Pretty the much, members, pretty the much, members yeah. help to sway management into their way of thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We did, we did that, James, right? The very first digital book world we had was probably the first, what we went to was the first time that we were able to kind of do that with a company um, that we approached, which was called, of course, Inkling. And Inkling is pretty great, and they're a great, you know, they're, they're big on doing ebooks of the future. And we've been able to kind of work with, with Inkling and, and talk to them and continue to kind of say, okay, well, look, you guys aren't quite ready yet to the point where all our members can really benefit, but that, that is something that is in, you know, in the works. And Matt, Matt McInnes is really, really great at what he does. So it's definitely not a relationship that we want to pass up on. I just don't think that they're ready right now to really provide something that is really of really great value to speedy publishing members and that's why we've kind of like we're still with them but you know we're just waiting for that to happen but companies like Adobe with Adobe Creative Cloud it's every single Adobe software you can think of that you're paying thirty dollars a month to access if you were to try and buy that buy every single bit of software you're paying probably close to I'd probably say thirty or forty grand and you can get that for thirty dollars a month and their initial cost is like fifty plus dollars a month so we were able to knock that literally in half, so just for speedy publishing members, which Excellent. made it absolutely awesome for us. All right, and here's a question that a lot of people are asking: Is how many books can I distribute uh, the first year? So okay. people are paying, you know, you're paying 197 for the training for life, and then 190, and then the same amount uh, um, gives you one year distribution rights. So how right. many books can you? So distribute? typically we go up to 100 books, and the reason why we do that is because when you're publishing your book, we anticipate that you're going to publish your both your audio, both your physical book, 
both your digital book if you want to put your enhanced book in there. So it's typically, I would say, 100 submissions more than 100 books, right? So if you, if you head over into the members area here, if I was to open a particular book, let me go ahead and probably try and find one of these existing books to kind of give you an idea of what I mean. So I could go to Care Lost No More and I could go ahead and edit this section here. I can actually submit basically different different books. So I could put in my web optimized PDF, um, sorry, my digital version, my physical version, and my audio version all at once. Right? So I could put in all three and that would count as one submission. So you want to look on it from that perspective. That is one submission. So for each title, we go up to a hundred titles, and that's basically for the first year. So you've got if you've got a hundred books and you want to submit them in both physical and digital, you have the opportunity. And what we found is that most authors will have like anywhere between five and ten books. But one of the things that we do teach James is that if you have a book and you're not publishing in the digital, physical, large print physical, um, your regular EPUB, your enhanced EPUB, get your books out in every single format, it will pay off. That's what you really want to do. Wait, let, me, let me ask people, people here, who, who here has a Kindle book that is doing you know, a couple of sales a month? You know, one or two, maybe three sales a month? Just type in the chat now. Just type in the chat. Do you have a Kindle book that you consider to be sort of a loser? You're only you're only getting one or two, maybe three sales a month. Let me let me hear from people who are in that who in that who are in that boat. Anybody in that boat? Okay. So what I'm getting at, and thanks for answering here. Um, thanks for for uh, for interacting with us here. Um, what I'm getting at is if you have a book in Kindle that's only doing one or two or three sales a month. Well, being able to put it out on the different platforms that Colin's talking about, you're going to immediately multiply your sales. I mean, I don't know how much. I don't know, at least double, triple, maybe even quadruple or more than that, the sales of what you would call a quote-unquote loser book. I mean, think about that. Think about that. The books that you publish that are getting you know very very few sales just using this platform you can immediately double triple quadruple the sales from those books isn't that ex I mean to me that's really exciting and then just imagine if you have a book that's actually doing well I mean Chris here is saying Chris says I've got a book that's doing five a month <laughs> all right you're doing five a month on Kindle Imagine if you're able to get it in all these other different distribution channels. You know, how many will you do there? Double, triple, quadruple? So now you're looking at 20 books a month, maybe even 30, 40 books a month. That's when the numbers really start to work for you. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's all for right, sure. so we have, we have just a couple left in the, uh, if you want to get the special bonus that Colin's offering. I think, uh, let me check here. Let me see if I can figure out how to work this thing. And I will tell you exactly. But in the meantime, let's get another question here. Um, sorry, hang on a second. I'm trying to figure out how to sort this thing. There's so many questions and comments coming in. Um, oh, this is a really good question. I'm so glad. Bruce asked this question, can I publish white papers, extended articles, business reports, or public domain? Definitely, definitely you can. Um, when it comes on to public domain, I mean, I personally am not a typical fan of public domain content. Um, I think it doesn't create any value for you at the end of the day, so the time and effort that you actually place in it um, is short-lived. It, the asset doesn't belong to you, so there's no real value attached to it, apart from just the format you put in there. So I'll say that primarily, that I'm not a fan of that. Um, but white papers and stuff like that, dissertations, you certainly can. You can definitely publish that through us, that is for sure. The only thing that we don't do yet is hardcover. Um, and we've been really trying to find a way to do that POD 
where it's going to be profitable. Um, other than that, I mean, we pretty much you can pretty much publish anything. Okay, Colin. It looks like uh, we got about f uh, five, six minutes left to the top of the hour, and we're going to have to uh, let Colin go right at the top of that, top of the hour. And we have a couple of we have a couple of um, of the bonuses available still. Two, three, three of the bonuses available for the um, the special um, uh, session. So let's get a few more questions in here before we have to leave. Just a second here. Sorry, I'm trying to do like three different things at once here. That's cool, man. Multitasking. Yes, I've always. <laughs> um, okay, I am new to book writing. Is there a way to take advantage of these techniques Techniques if I do not have any books at this time? Wow. That's I why should. Colin threw in you know, the training, it, the yeah. training material here. I mean, that's going to show you how to do books if you've never done them before. I'm sorry, Colin, I had to jump in there, but you go ahead and elaborate <laughs> on that. No, you're absolutely right. You are right on the money. <laughs> you are right on the money, man. That is, that is basically what it is. That is exactly what it is. So it's definitely just as you said. Um, if you are pre-published, then you definitely have that opportunity to go ahead and earn more, and that's for sure. So it's very, very simple, very, very straightforward. All right, and Ruth is uh, talking about the barbecue, the barbecue books that you showed earlier, mm -hmm. and she said they're priced, I didn't notice this, but she said they're priced at $3.18. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for that price point, which I'm really interested Actually, in. no. Um, <laughs> what basically happens is that when you publish to through in, in the way how we publish, a lot of the time, we just tell the um, the retailer, "Look, we need the book. We need X dollars from that particular book," and that retailer will go ahead and say, "Okay, fine, we got you." And then once they say that, they say that, then the next step is they will go ahead and price the book what they feel like pricing it. So they're the ones who actually chose that three dollars and eighteen cents. It's not what we basically chose. We just told them that, "Look." We need X dollars from the book, and that's basically it, and we move on. <laughs> so we don't care what they sell it at. Um, typically, they'll put like probably a margin of probably 10, 15 percent on it, or less. In the case where Amazon, where Google did their Cyber Monday, they actually took a loss, so they put some budget behind their Cyber, you know, their Cyber Monday book sale, and you know, ended up paying out to those people and gave it away to people who were buying on the Android or the Google Play Store at a massive discount. So it's typically what the retailer decides. We just tell the retailer that we need X dollars back for each particular unit sale, and that's pretty much it. They'll determine what exactly happens. All right, if you're having problems getting logged in after purchasing, don't worry, we'll get that straightened out. Colin has all your email addresses, so we'll send that information out to you. So don't worry about that. Oh, for sure. Uh, Judy wants to know, do we still retain rights to our books? Yes, you do. We don't take any rights. No exclusive contracts, nothing like that. And so um, no exclusive means they can publish to someone else if they want to. They can, they can do still self-publish if they want to. Yes, they can. All they got to do, if they want to, and I mean, if you want to withdraw your title, it's as simple as just heading over to our dedicated help desk and just letting us know. And if you, right. yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. You just hit on our help desk here, and then you would, of course, go ahead and submit a ticket. And then, of course, you can go ahead and choose Speedy Publishing Co., and then you can just select withdraw a title, and then you can go ahead and go through the process. And it's very, very simple. So... <laughs> So we've kind of covered all the bases. <laughs> all right, and Sean says, I have published only one book and sold over 300 in the last two weeks. So congratulations, Sean. Way to go. Awesome. That's excellent. Awesome. That's excellent. Awesome. Uh, are there any other costs involved? Uh, typically, no. I mean, apart from what you're basically doing in terms of your content acquisition and your design, 
if you're publishing null, you would already have incurred those costs. So apart from what you're paying, no, there are no costs. Typically, the cost of an ASBN is 125 bucks, um, and you're getting a couple of those free per title. So you would want to basically use those up as well. Because we're really partnering with as many you know, self-publishers as we possibly can. That's the real key here, to get your content out to as many places. I suffered at the hands of a vanity publisher paying thousands of dollars um, to publish my book. And I decided when I started out to get the most from publishing, this is what we would basically do. All right, and HJ wants to know, can you do Coom binding? Um, it depends. The company that we work with, it would be something that we could look on because we work with companies with Can, can you explain what that means, Colin, Coom binding? Um, it's a type of it's a type of binding that you put your books in. Um, it's Spire. pretty hard it's kind, to of it's kind of a spiral like binding, yeah. right? Right. It's something like that, which is typically not the ordinary type of perfect no. bound binding. Um, but the key here is is that we partner with other people um, like Formax Printing and those other companies. So in terms of getting your content out there, it can help. We can work with you to do that and get your content distributed. All you've got to do is reach out to our help desk about it if you don't see that binding readily available during your submission process. All right, um, let's see. Looks like, uh, yeah, looks like it's top of the hour now, Colin. So we will have the replay out tomorrow. And anyone who purchased tonight, you are in the first 25. So don't worry, awesome. you've got that. And if you have problems logging in, getting access, don't worry, we'll get those problems worked out tonight and make Excellent. sure you get access. So I think that's it, Colin. We'll get the replay out tomorrow for you and through the weekend. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone for attending. It's been great. <laughs>